welcome back to the Peculiar Place podcast. I'm here once again with my husband, Ty. People are still in recovery right now. It's going to be a little while before we get back to our regular yeah. scheduled programming with Mandy. Well, you just said that so casually. Mandy had her baby. <laughs> well, I didn't know how much we were going to be saying. No, Obviously, we alluded to the fact that, you know, the due date was definitely coming up. <laughs> The way you said it's so monotone. Mandy had a baby. We are so excited. Very Um, excited. We can't go into too much detail because I know that Mandy really, really wants to do like a whole birth story when she comes back in February. And that's probably going to be like an entire episode's worth. So we're going to let, you know, her tell her story when she comes here. But just to give like a little uh, inside scoop on our side of things, we were so anxious because the day that she was in labor, We live an hour away, and so we were just constantly on standby, waiting around. Like We were taking power naps throughout the day because we didn't know at what time things were going to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's such a useless feeling to be so far away, but there was no point us going and waiting all day because we have the dogs at home as well. So we wanted to come at that perfect time where the dogs could be home for like six hours while we're with her. So we ended up going to the hospital at like one in the morning, and uh, I'll let Mandy tell the story from there, but... I would say we can basically sum it up with this. Okay. Mandy and Luca, they're good. Yes. The baby is great. Great. We'll leave it at that. Everyone's healthy. Ophelia, you guys know her name. She is beautiful. And so Ty and I have been over at their house the past few days just looking after her. My mom and I are kind of doing like shift work just to let like Mandy and Luca sleep. And then we're there and we look after the baby. It's a lot of work, but honestly, I couldn't be happier. Like, I'm an aunt, you're an uncle. It's going to take a little while to get used to it. Yeah, I mean. I'm going to be subtly suggesting to baby Ophelia, what she's going to be calling me. But uh, you guys have it in place that I'm going to be known as Uncle Bean because Jesse calls me Bean. Yes. But I'm trying to slip in like Deathblade or something. Something awesome. She's not going to be able to pronounce that. She might. You never know. (laughs) Deathblade. That might be probably not her first or second word, but maybe that will be the word that she will eventually recognize me as. All right. right. I'll just keep whispering just Deathblade. And then she'll eventually just say it. Probably. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, babies are all good. Mandy's healing. And we'll leave it at that. And then when Mandy comes back, you'll hear the full story because she has a lot. She even has some drama that happened at the hospital with a nurse. And so she is just so excited. Spoiling stuff. No, no. She's going to want you guys to be left. You're you're acting like a a cliffhanger. You're acting like a trailer. You're, a just, trailer? you're just giving too much information. I want people away. to be excited to hear about it because it's quite it's quite the journey. So it is. Anyway, it definitely we'll leave is it at that. for everybody involved. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into doing some of our trending topics this week, and the first one that we have on here, Ty and I were talking about a lot when it happened. I think about a week ago. It's about that man who attacked. The judge. Okay. I don't know if you guys have seen. I was going to say, we have a lot of conversations. So it took me a little while for my brain (laughs) to actually start connecting which conversation about people we were talking about. This video has been trending all over social media. So if you haven't seen it, um, I'd be surprised. Basically, this happened on January 3rd. They were in the courtroom and the judge said something pretty sassy to the man who was there on trial or for yeah, his court hearing or whatever it he was. He was in this hearing and he was basically trying to convey to the judge that all of his past wrongdoings, he is trying his best to recognize that and do better. And we're not sure what those are, by the way. No, I don't, don't know, know what, what the charges are other than just basically what was spoken about in the video. But if you want to go watch it, go watch it. Basically up on trial for a lot of things. Yeah. And after pleading with this judge, She has a sassy remark. And he freaks out. I think he mumbles. He swore at her or something. He does, yes. And then he runs right at her, jumps right over the stand, and tackles her to the ground. And all of the police and the security guards are running at him, trying to hold him back. And he's doing some damage. The video is honestly terrifying because you don't expect that to happen. Well, in any situation, you don't expect a full-grown man to launch themselves at you. Well, exactly. And it doesn't help the fact that in this video, he's talking about how all of his past wrongdoings, they're in the past. He's trying to do better. And then he does this. And then he does this. Was he provoked a little bit with a sassy comment? Yeah, but you never do that. You can get upset, absolutely. 
It's not a crime to have attitude, but diving on somebody and assaulting them, it's very but clear that's what happened. You know <laughs> but... what, though? I like sassy judges. I have seen a lot of court hearings where the person has done some really bad things and the judge is sassy to them. And honestly, I'm like, hell yeah. I mean, it depends on what it I is. I feel like it's a very risky place. I know. To I know. Be sassy I because know. whenever you're sassy, sarcastic, whatever to anybody, you are taking that risk that it's they're probably not going to react well, especially in a court situation where there's the potential where the people are on trial for, you know, going off the rails and violent interactions. It's probably best not to be super sassy. I know you just, figure, you know, it's to be risky. safe. It's yeah. risky as shown in the video. But she's apparently OK. She's recovering. And I have a little note here that uh, it says the arrest report says he told the officers that he was just having a bad day. It's a little bit more than a bad day. You're allowed to have a bad day. I've had many bad days before. But I've had brutal days. But you don't it tackle doesn't, people. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't end with me tackling somebody unless I was playing like a sports game. Yeah. But even still, that's within the confines of the rules. This was a courtroom. Yeah. So hopefully everyone is okay. I made a discovery that I've been saying a word very, very wrong. And my whole entire life, I thought I was saying it correctly. And here's what it is. She discovers this stuff usually once a week. There's always one saying, she says, and I don't have the heart to tell but her. But I bet other people are saying it like I am. Oh, with the sheer amount of people on this world, I guarantee you they're saying it wrong like you were. Are you ready for this? I, I already know what it is, so I've been ready for a while. This is so embarrassing. I say half-hazardly. Half-hazardly. Instead of, what's the real word? Half-hazardly? No. Half-hazardly? Hap. Hap. Hazardly. Hazardly. It's all one word. Haphazardly. Haphazardly. Yes. But do you see how it kind of sounds like haphazardly? Well, there's the PH in there, which, of course, since the English language is just weird, apparently PH is a f sound. So I can understand somebody looking at the word and thinking, oh, it's haphazardly. But no, haphazardly. Yeah, so it's not too crazy. It's not. I can understand why, but haphazard, like the term <laughs> for it, is that... You're doing it in almost like a hazardous way. Yeah. But when you say half-hazardly, it means it's like, ah, oh, it's only kind of hazardous. Anyway, that's what I learned this week. If anyone else says it like I do, please let me know so I don't feel as bad. It's, it's pretty funny. Though. At it's least really I'm owning cute. up to it. It's cute. Okay. But I think it's great that the person that has been in school to speak English their entire life is the one that usually messes up with these little sayings. All right. We're going to play a fun little Taylor Swift game. I'm really nervous, to say the least. <laughs> Jesse has given me some clues as to like what this is going to be. And I feel like I'm going to be either really, really good. So people are going to think I am a huge Taylor Swift fan. Honestly, she's a good artist. Yeah. There's some bangers. I'm not going to be above any of that kind of stuff. But I really don't listen to Taylor Swift unless Jesse puts a song on in the car. That's really my experience. Or if it comes up on the radio yeah. while I'm at work. Yeah. That's it. Okay. This is called... Is it a Taylor Swift song or a Bath and Body Works scent? Okay, I didn't come up with this. This has been going around the internet, but I feel like you're the perfect person because you don't listen to Taylor Swift. And I don't go into Bath and Body Works either. Exactly, so it's perfect. Okay, so all you have to do is say yes or no. Yes or no, or I, I, I'm- Oh, sorry, sorry, Yeah, I'm, that's I'm, wrong. I'm, I have a feeling I'm supposed to decide which one is <laughs> yeah, which. Yeah, you have to say Taylor Swift or but Bath from, and Body from Works. From this point forward, I'm just gonna say yes or no. Okay. I'm just not gonna play this game. Here we go. A Thousand Wishes. I'm going to say that's Bath and Body Works. Yes. I feel like that was just that as a primer. I feel like that's like, oh, could it be a lovey-dovey song or a breakup song by Taylor Swift? No, no, that's got to be Bath and Body Works. Okay. Lavender Haze. I feel like that's Taylor Swift. Yes. Because I'm surprised. that sounds too much like a soap. Okay. That sounds way too much like a soap. Christmas Tree Farm. See, I know that this is probably Taylor Swift. I am so impressed by well, you. Well, that was more so because just, I think I heard a story a long time ago, just one of those pop culture things that apparently that her family owned one. I don't know. And that it was her job to pick bugs out of the trees or something like that. Wolf spiders. <laughs> Hopefully not wolf <laughs> spiders. Maybe praying mantises. You never Maybe. know. Maybe. Um, into the Night. Bath and Body Works. Yes. Oh my gosh, you're killing this. Apparently. Haunted Nights. 
Bath and Body Works. Yes. Oh my gosh. Are you like a secret Taylor Swift fan and I just don't I'm know? I'm honestly not. <laughs> I'm honestly not. My music taste is awful. Wonderland. I have a feeling that's Taylor Swift. Yes. Honestly, like when it comes down to it, the math and all this, it's really a 50-50. I'm just getting really lucky. You are. Dark Kiss. See, like one would say it's like, oh, that sounds like a really edgy romance song, but I'm going to say Bath and Body Works. Yes. Ty, if you, you have two more. If you get all of these right, that will be I insane. Say, I'm pretty good at this, okay. but I'm going to mess up now. The yeah. pressure is on. Forever Winter. Taylor Swift. Yes. Last one. Are you going to get them all? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, okay. I got some splaining to do, don't I? Midnight Snow. Okay, that's Bath and Body Works. Like, I feel like you should have gotten, like, more, more, like, ones that weren't so obvious. I feel like the ones that were Bath and Body Works, that just sounds like a super ritzy smell Did someone for, like, swap, berries. Did someone swap bodies with my husband? Maybe. All right, wow. This is just a thought that I had this week while reading books. And I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but whenever I read fictional books or even watch fictional movies i hate it when they include covid especially like in because books recently they're doing that yes especially because a lot of the books i read are like fantasy or have fantasy or paranormal elements so and it's, it's not... fantasy covid yeah and like all of a sudden the characters are like oh we're in quarantine now you know covid hit and i'm like what lately i would say five percent of the books that i read a year and i read like over 100 books a year they mention covid all of a sudden and it's not even like that's what the book's about. It's like they're going on a quest to like get the magic golden egg. And they're like, well, we got to bring our masks. My question, do you think people back in like old times during the Black Plague, the survivors of the Black Plague felt the same way when their literature that they were reading involved the Black Plague? <laughs> I don't know. You don't think so? It's just like you want, it's They're escapism. just reading a book. It's like, oh, they just mentioned the word bubonic. And they're like, ugh. Reminding Probably, me of real life. honestly, like when you're reading or when you're watching a movie, unless you've chosen nonfiction that is about that or whatever, someone's life who went through that, sure. But like if I'm picking up a fictional book, why do you why do you got to put that in there? To think of it completely logically is to just have that extra thing to make somebody relate to the book as a last no. ditch effort to be like, yeah, I remember those times. Times were tough being locked in a house. So it's like, we're going to get some connection there. I just feel like those times, like it, COVID was like a fever dream. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still trying to figure out if like that actually happened, you know? It did. It I definitely know, happened. I know it did, obviously. It, it definitely but happened. Like, I remember braving the grocery stores with your dad dressed up like bikers, basically, because the they masks were, like, were over your nose. Masked, it was like, like a bandana. 17 <laughs> times because nobody had no idea what they were doing. And I had to shop for you and I. And he had to shop for uh, him and your mom, basically. Yeah. And then eventually Luca joined in on the mix, too. So it was three of us dressed up, just running through the Fortinos, getting yep. all of our food for the week, sanitizing everything in the garage. It was crazy. I'm sure a lot of you have done this, but it was nuts. And now put that scenario into your fictional fantasy novel. Well, I don't read, <laughs> I know. Which, is, which is another statement that people have been asking about, that yeah. you were asking me. Does Ty read? Phrasing it in a way like I'm illiterate. <laughs> yeah, someone asked that. They're like, does Ty read? Basically, does Ty know how to read? <laughs> no, that's not what they said. I feel like that's what it was meant as. <laughs> it kind of sounds like that. It does sound like it. <laughs> yes, I do know how to read. I just don't really spend most of my hobby time reading. I want to know what is with the Stanley Cup craze. Well, people like hockey, Jess. Not that cup. I'm talking about the ones that every girl carries around. They're ginormous. Are you talking about like the Starbucks ones or something like that? No. The Stanley uh, Cup, they're like the insulated, like they're like, they, they kind of go like this and then they go down like that and they have the little handle. So it looks like the mugs that everyone's parents took into work every yeah, day in the Yeah, morning. actually they do. Except now it's like a brand name and like it comes in all kinds of different colors and it looks just heavy to carry around. And I mean, like, listen, if it works for you and it's keeping your water or your coffee or whatever cold or warm, great. It's just, why are they over a hundred dollars? Because everything's over $100 this day. But you can get like one that does the same thing. 
that just doesn't have Stanley on it and you can get it for like 40 or 50 bucks. See, I wish that was actually the case. I did look into this a little bit. Okay. I believe the Stanley is like the brand that makes tools. Okay. Because I have like the Stanley Fat Max tape measure and like water hoses for our garden. Okay. And it's good stuff. It's good quality stuff. But I was seeing videos of people waiting outside in the cold for like hours upon hours to get a mug. The Stanley? Yeah. And like people were stealing them and it was crazy because I think there was like a Starbucks crossover that they did. I can understand for like some things having a crossover, but hey, mug crossover. Why is it always Starbucks too? Because Starbucks rules everything. Starbucks has to dip their toes into every single thing. I can go on for ages about Starbucks. (laughs) Funny enough, about a furniture job. Yeah. We'll leave that for later. I don't understand the crossover for a mug. And I don't understand the craze for it. If it's a good quality mug, that's great. But there's tons of other companies that also make great quality mugs. And I'm pretty sure it's just a pink mug that has Starbucks written on it. And Stanley. Yeah. And, like, people were scalping these things, trying to sell them for multiples of hundreds of dollars, basically. And, like, I don't understand that. But albeit, I'm not going to judge anybody who is out there trying to get these Yeah, I mean, you do. Because, you you know, Jesse collects mugs like no tomorrow. (laughs) I don't but understand But they're like $4. It. <laughs> Some of them were a little pricey. Okay, 10. Some of them were getting up to 20. No. And you've never used them. You just like to look at them. <laughs> I display them. them. We have an entire cabinet that's stacked to the brim. Like we we're at the point where we're stacking mugs and mugs. I know. I got to get rid of some of them. Probably. Really it might be a good idea to do a donation run soon. Yeah. I don't really understand this craze for a mug, but I do have a question I want to propose to you though. Okay. About this situation. Okay. What would you be willing to wait hours outside for? Brand new unveiling of something or an item or an event. And you can't say you won't do that. You no, I have would. to choose. Because I know some people would be like, oh, no, that's ridiculous. No, you have to choose. Okay, two things. Either for a mac and cheese festival, I would wait in line all day to go to a festival. So is of this mac just like farmer's market specifically for mac and cheese or is this one for like the big brands of mac and cheese that you do no i like the homemade like everyone kind of has a food truck so it's kind of like a chili festival or a wing festival except for mac and cheese yeah okay or to meet a person like someone from just anybody no no no. (laughs) just to meet somebody someone that like you know i watch either in lord of the rings or star wars or like one of my favorite actors or something like i would wait in line to meet them i I mean i do understand that but it'd have to be someone i really really cared for like who in specific though i don't know like name an actor hayden christensen i mean that'd be pretty neat (laughs) he plays anakin in star wars i would wait to meet him or like ian summerhalder from Vampire Diaries. I mean, he he's a sexy dude. I I, I don't blame he's, you. Yeah. That dude seems to have beat aging. It looks like he's looked the same for like the past twenty years. I think he's aging, but he's aging like fine wine. <laughs> he's aging well. See, I don't understand that phrase in particular. Like fine wine. I've left wine for a long time. It just turns to vinegar. Well, you have to do it properly. You can't just like open up the wine in your thing and leave it on don't the counter. Don't judge me how I do things. Jess. All right. All right. It might work one of these days. But for me. If I honestly had to choose what I'd wait for, if I was a kid still, it was always video games. Absolutely. Like, I would wait hours just to get, like, at the time, the new Call of Duty or Halo or something like that. That was my favorite thing. As an adult, I realize that's a little ridiculous. However, I'm kind of going a little bit back in time as I get older for a board game, specifically Warhammer. I would do that for. There's a new edition that came out. That's like the older version. And of course, in my brain, I'm like, that must mean it's like brand new, but it's all the good stuff that I learned how to play with. So I would do that, but only if they were giving something away. Okay. Because that hobby is way too expensive. Yeah. Way too expensive. So we would do it. So we can't make fun of those people waiting for the Stanley. I, I, I never intended to make fun though, of them. Because that's I their just, thing. I have trouble understanding for a mug, but then they would have trouble understanding for like hunks of plastic that don't do anything or mac and cheese well at least mac and cheese feeds you and a (laughs) mug can hold fluids that's true this is just a piece of plastic that i pay way too much yeah but it's a hobby so it it makes sense yeah next i'll let you run this one because i have written down influencers with ai imprints so tell me what that means because you told me to put it in my notes and i did and i'm very curious influencers and ai ai is 
exploding right now. Yeah. I'm not an expert. I'm probably going to mess things up. But I've been seeing a lot of people commenting on the fact that there are celebrities and influencers basically imprinting their personalities into AI. I'm not sure if that's the right term, but to serve as chatbots, basically, for their fans to be able to communicate them without actually communicating with the influencer. Okay. And there's people doing it for various different reasons. But my question that I wanted to propose to you is how do you feel about this, especially being a YouTuber and all that? I have my opinions on it, and I'll save that for a little bit. But I want to hear your opinions. How do you feel like this is going to affect the environment around all this stuff and like when it comes to fan interactions? I think it's strange. I mean, I wouldn't do it, although I did come out with a game last year. That was a chat, like a conversation sort of puzzle but game. But that was like a pick your own adventure kind of yes, thing. Yes, but you were talking to Jesse, yes. right? But I made it apparent that it wasn't actually me. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's kind of similar to what you just spoke about, although it's a game and you can't really generate new conversation. Like you can't ask questions. It's like you're kind of selecting the it's answers like as you speak choice, to me. It's like multiple choice, kind of. So it's a little different. Yeah, but it's it's... Like the stuff that we're talking about here is more so like you type in anything you want and it will try and answer as best as it can, like the influencer, the celebrity. Yeah, that so it's like you're freedom of with. any conversation you want to have. You can and have. I think the video that I was looking at, it was uh, somebody commenting on uh, the streamer Amaranth. I don't know who that did is. one. Okay. And the whole thing that they had in it is that it's apparently like chatting with them and that it would send you photos and videos. Take that as you will and like generate these things for you, basically. Is it free? Probably not. Because I don't know if I like that. Yeah. But like obviously a lot of people, you know, if you're working, you, you usually want to get paid for your time and all that stuff. And this could have, this is essentially like your likeness in like appearing on TV, this, that. You're basically providing your likeness for other people to interact with. Right. So I do worry about, especially like with some of the uh, stories that Jesse has shared and Mandy as well, that like the world today, everything's online and there's so many jobs now that didn't exist in the past. And especially with people who are TV personalities, movie personalities, internet personalities now, there's a lot of people that will start developing parasocial relationships, right? And it's that's, like that movie, uh, Her. That it's it's like Joaquin we're, Phoenix with the AI. Yeah, where he falls in love with his computer. Yeah, and it's like I do worry about like because you know ninety nine percent of the time people understand that you know this is you know like a show movie this that it's it's entertainment yeah that you're consuming depending on the format that you're consuming like especially like vlog channels this that a lot of people will develop connections and yes we're extremely thankful for the people that have supported us during this time that watch our content we appreciate that and we recognize you but when it comes to when you guys said you've had meet and greet stories that can be pretty concerning because yes you see us on the screens you listen to us watch us but we might not have met you yet right mm -hmm. so it's like a first meeting and stuff and there's people that will develop that almost relationship of you know so much about the person you're watching that you're basically it's like best friend yeah right and i worry that these ai imprints and all this stuff might cause an increase in like potentially dangerous interactions with people that develop these parasocial relationships in an unhealthy way right i feel like people who are doing this i understand like it's the brand new thing but it could potentially lead to more dangerous situations. I do worry about that. A big thing, the reason why these things are like popping off is I know in this day and age, the amount of people who are dealing with extreme lon loneliness is just increasing and increasing. It's especially after the pandemic, like everything is online. There mm -hmm. isn't social interactions in person nearly as much anymore. And it's a lot harder to do that. And especially with people with anxiety and like just stacking on more and more stuff there's a lot of pressure and it's hard so it can serve as an outlet for social interaction which can be good but also you know it's a, it's a double-edged sword when it comes to that yeah it can be worrisome in my opinion yeah i mean ai can be it's hit or miss ai 
is both incredible and terrifying at the yeah, same time. Yeah, I'm not a hater, but I'm also not 100% for it either. I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle. Depends on what it's used for. and It's it's crazy the amount of advancements we've had in just the past few years alone. Yeah. And AI should be used as a tool to help people with like a huge variety of issues and things that or like to be used to help solve solutions. But it can be scary if it's used improperly. Moving on to a way different subject, uh, our last little topic that I have here. You know that shriveled up old lady in the wheelchair from SpongeBob? I'm glad that the last sentence was from SpongeBob because <laughs> I thought you were trying to make me just think of maybe like a very old lady, old lady relative that we might have met a long time ago. I'm thinking it's like Edna. <laughs> Okay, this might blow your mind. I always thought she was like a dead fish. I thought she was a worm. A worm. I always thought that maybe she was a fish that died a long time ago and all that was left was the spinal cord. Like I wasn't really sure. Sometimes like I think one of my cousins thought she was like a cigarette. A <laughs> cigarette butt or something. Yeah, like I, no one really knew what she was. She is an actual sea creature. Like she's based off an actual sea creature and it's called a sea tulip. And if you go on Google, it says it's unable to move around, which I guess, hence the hence wheelchair, the wheelchair they put her in. <laughs> and apparently it's a filter feeder. So it gets most of its nutrients by like... Cleaning? Or the water moves around it and whatever particulates are in the air or in the air, in the water. Yeah. It basically sucks it out from there. I just had no idea she was based off something real. What's crazy about SpongeBob is when you're watching it as a kid, you're just thinking it's like, oh, fish, it's funny, ha, ha, yeah. ha. But I'm pretty sure one of the creators is a marine biologist. Oh. So the stuff that's in it might seem incredibly obscure, but it's actually like real sea life. Yeah. It's scientifically accurate, for sure. It definitely is. <laughs> Maybe not the face on it and the fact that it's screaming at people. But, uh, I mean, looking back at it and seeing it, you can see that they did deal with it in a clever way. The fact yeah. that it was always being pushed around in a wheelchair. But Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Very silly show. Clever. The more Definitely you know. clever. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on. Um, I put on my Instagram a couple days ago um, for you guys to send us in any questions or topics that you wanted us to cover. And so I collected a bunch of them. And so we're just going to go through them because last week you guys heard about, you know, how we met, sort of our relationship timeline. If you didn't know Ty before, now you do and you know us both in a relationship. And so it's kind of cool to get further questions or anything you guys wanted us to talk further about. Some of these aren't even about our relationship. They're just like very random, fun things that and I we'll kind of tossed in. answer as best we can. Okay. And we have discussed this a couple times, but just in case, you know, anyone missed it, uh, one of our most asked questions, and I'm talking about 70% of the questions that we get are about when we're going to have a baby. So we're just going to quickly go through this one because I know it's our most asked and I know that people mean it probably respectfully and in a good way and they don't have any bad intentions behind the question. And especially because, you know, we just posted uh, baby Ophelia on our story. And so I think that's kind of also getting everyone's mind rolling. You well, know, I will put just in between all of this. Both you and your sister did have a very good conversation about this a couple episodes back. Yes. So go check that out. Yes. It's a good one. Yeah, we did talk about it. So a lot of the questions were formatted like, now that you've seen your niece, does it make you want to have a baby sort of thing? Or do you have baby fever? Right. But most of the questions are, when are you having kids? Why is it taking so long for you guys to have a baby? Like Mandy and I said a couple podcasts ago, it's just a disrespectful question. And I know it's not intended to be that way, but like we said, not everyone can have kids or they've tried and something bad has happened and now they have, you know, they have their PTSD reservations, and stuff from it. whatever, basically. There's so many reasons why people might not be having kids. And a reason might also just be that they just don't want to. And that's totally fine, mm -hmm. right? With Ty and I, first of all, I have a lot of health issues that you guys know about. And it's a risk for me to be pregnant. We can do it. But it would be considered a high risk pregnancy. I I'd have to go on all kinds of medication. I remember about all this stuff when we were going through our Lyme treatment. And they said the amount of medication that Jesse would have to be on, it would be almost like a lab experiment. Yes. Where it was constant communication with the doctor. 
constant adjustments of medication to figure things out solely to ensure that if we were having a baby to give them the best chance and also reducing the possibility of passing on Jesse's condition onto the baby. Yeah. And like it was like the checklist was enormous and daunting and terrifying. Really, really sucks that it's not like, say, the same situation that everybody else can go through where it's decide to do it. Let's, you know, talk to a few doctors, get our plan in place and go. This would be extremely intensive, especially on you. So risky. And it's like, do I want to do that to myself, let alone my unborn child? that would probably also be highly at risk, right? It's like, it's a stressful thing to think about. So I just, we haven't fully decided on it yet, but Ty and I are also happy not having a kid, you know? Like that's just not in our near future. It might change. I'm not saying we're a hundred percent, but right now, like- The future isn't put in place yet. I'm happy to be, you know, helping out with my niece. I'm happy to be in a marriage where we have other things that we're doing, right? And sometimes I feel like these questions make me feel like my life is like unfulfilled until I have a baby because people make it such like a, when is it like, why is it taking so long? Like I haven't even reached my full potential until I become a mom, right? And that's just, not my path right now and it might not be ever so my response to these questions is i know how crazy i am just in general you probably can't believe it with my monotone voice Uh, my parents told me all the horror stories of how i was when i was a kid i don't think we need to birth another human (laughs) being with that much energy that much destructive potential no i think it would be very cute we need to save the earth (laughs) From a being from such all as the that. baby ties. <laughs> I feel like if I reproduce, it is will be a detriment to society. No, that would not be a reason we wouldn't have kids. He's kidding, but uh, yeah. for those who are watching the video, you can probably see my face. Yeah, I am doing the sarcastic He's face joking. a little bit. Let's move on now that you guys hopefully understand where we're coming from. How does Ty celebrate your birthday and Valentine's Day? I'll let you answer that one because my birthday is on Valentine's Day, by the way. That's why this question is here. Ready for it? Yes. I don't. What do you mean? I'm only kidding. No. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? My birthday's in like a few weeks. <laughs> it is in a few weeks. Uh, and Valentine's Day. So funny enough, Jesse isn't the only member of her family who has a birthday that falls on top of a famous holiday or a famous day. My grandpa's birthday is on Christmas. Yes. And there's an easy way to go about it birthday first and then it's the holiday whichever it is but it has to be separate so if i'm getting jesse a gift for valentine's day we do it like in the morning birthday birthday always comes first yeah morning it's happy birthday usually at 12 o'clock in the morning i whisper to jesse happy birthday and then happy valentine's day make sure birthday comes first And then uh, with Valentine's Day and stuff like that, honestly, I don't think we usually do gifts other than like like chocolate or something like that. But we we usually go on a date. Yeah. So probably not same night because I'll be doing my birthday dinner that night. We do a birthday dinner, usually make her something or give her a gift. And then we do the Valentine's thing. On the weekend or whatever. We usually do something together and celebrate each other for Valentine's Day. Yes, exactly. So that's how we do it. If I remember. That's a good answer. What do you mean if you remember? (laughs) You're going to forget my we Valentine's Day birthday? We have a literal sign in our house showing us when our wedding anniversary is. And you forget. And I forget. <laughs> this one's just funny. Can you guys talk about the dark side of Transformers? Decepticons. Done. That's it? I don't know what the context of this funny question is. Like, the dark side, I guess the bad guys they're basing it off you guys know i've done the past like three years i do they're probably like hoping for like maybe the lost tape of transformers or something like that but i took it as decepticons autobots decepticons are usually the baddies Mm -hmm. decepticons done i was gonna say that um they're basing it off of the series i was doing where i post videos called the dark side of blank and it's like a random like topic but did you do the dark side of the force yet i haven't i Video haven't yet right but everyone there. knows it's just the sith hey it goes deeper than that i could ask my friend from college and he could give you probably a 30 minute powerpoint presentation about the intricacies 
of the Force in and of itself. Listen, I love Star Wars, but that sounds very boring. He basically gave me a watch list. Okay. See, I know my dad would... would probably like that. Oh, your dad would love it, but your dad probably already knows it. Probably. It's like the back of his hand. What was the shift like for Ty going from his old life to a life with Jesse and her B team? My old life. Your old life. You make it seem like my life has changed radically. Well, it has. I mean, I'm married to you, and that's it, fantastic. Mine's changed since being with you. Yeah, you have to deal with this monotone guy that's just <laughs> always just like slumping around the house. Apparently, funny story, Jesse's still not used to living with me yet. I have been with her for nearly 10 years at this point. And if I am in a room and she walks in, she will jump. Yeah, but I jump at everything. I'm very easily startled. But I will be in the kitchen smashing and crashing about. You will walk around the corner into the kitchen and jump. Well, I know you're in the room. I just I'm don't expect you quiet. to be suddenly there. I am not quiet. I live with you. I know. I jump all the time. But when to he's answer around. the question, it wasn't really a radical change for me. And that's, for me, it makes me feel like I've made the right decision because I feel like I didn't have to change. I really didn't. I yeah. can still be myself. I'm not this brand new guy. No, of course suddenly. not. Yeah. So it hasn't been much of a change, really. Like, I feel like living with you has come easy. It's not like it's a struggle. Yeah, you know, there's minor changes and stuff like that. But I really... Mean traveling and uh meet and greets and, and stuff like the uh last minute hey get on a plane we're going somewhere for 24 hours <laughs> we're going hours. to new york for a red carpet premiere sweet yeah but uh being the hermit that i am that likes to sit inside it's kind of like oh no <laughs> but it's great it's a whirlwind but it's a fun one yeah it definitely is there, there hasn't been a big shake up for me it really hasn't. I find this next question to be very interesting because I've never heard of people um, associate couples like this. Who is the black cat and the golden retriever in the relationship? So I, I've heard about golden retriever boyfriends. It's like when someone's like sort of happy, the humorous one, they're kind of like the clown in the relationship. They're usually positive. And the black cat is probably like someone who's quieter and a bit more moody and uh, I don't know, black cat vibes. I mean, I've had a black cat that was absolutely nuts <laughs> before. I wouldn't take it too seriously. She was great. I had another black cat that uh, there was something wrong with her voice box. So when she purred, it sounded like a dove Aww. and it was loud. Wait, I love that. She was really loud. But the issue was, is that it would go on for hours. <laughs> and in the middle of the night, she would sneak up to you, rub her head on your hand if it was hanging off the bed, and then the purring would start. That actually sounds pretty cute. She was adorable. But also terrifying. But I would just lay it plain here, golden retriever, black cat. Okay. I was pointing at Jesse for the black cat for those who are just listening. Right, right, right. Yeah, yes. I agree with that. And I mean, I got the black hair, you got the blonde hair. I feel like we kind of suit each title. But I mean, I make jokes all the time. You it's do. hard to tell when I'm being serious. Yeah, and I am pretty serious. I read and I, yeah, I'm i probably can, moodier than you. You, you. you are pretty moody. See, for those <laughs> who are listening, she just gave me a huge glare. She gave him a look. She did. No, it's. I won't deny it. I won't deny it. <laughs> what subjects in school are the most meaningless to learn? I don't think there is such thing as a meaningless subject in school. Learning is good no matter what you're doing. Any it's, small it's amount. It's completely subjective on the fact that what do you want to do, right? They're going to teach you things based on the things that you're interested in. Yeah, there's probably going to be some things that, depending on your job prospects, aren't really going to be used very much. Like, as an English teacher, you're not going to be doing a lot of math. Why don't we switch it a bit and say, what was the most meaningless to you, personally? Because uh, for me, I would probably say, like, gym class, um, the beep test, you know? Hey, <laughs> it's all about health, and that's important. Like, I never found that for really. For me, probably the most meaningless, and my mom's going to hate me for saying this, French. Oh. To give a little background into this situation, when I was a young kid, I did preschool, and then my parents immediately enrolled my brother and I into a full French immersion school. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has helped me, but I don't speak French anymore. And it actually got to a point where when we moved out of the district, they didn't have French immersion anymore. So I went to regular school, and I had to go and learn English, basically. 
and I was leagues behind everybody when it came to English. I could speak French like no tomorrow. Yeah. But I had so much trouble trying to transition everything because sentence structure and all that stuff is kind of jumbled about a little bit. And now it's at the point that, yes, I speak English. I can write in English. French has helped me be hyper aware of how I write and at least how I speak. My parents would make fun of my brother and I because they would say we talk like old men. Very like we used to speak almost like classical English, not like doth or the or anything like <laughs> yeah. that, but just how we would structure things. Now I barely speak French. I can understand a little bit, but I do not speak well at all. I lost my accent. It has turned out to be the one thing that I invested a lot of time in school for that I don't use anymore. Yeah. And what about for you? I was saying gym, like gym class. Because you don't run. <laughs> I don't like running. I don't like doing like a lot of I don't think activity. anybody likes running, Jess. Um, and if they say they do, they're lying. Honestly, that like, is my personal philosophy. Ballroom dancing. We had to do that for a little while. I think that's silly. Like, why do I need to know how to do that? Um, I mean, it definitely helped on our wedding day. Some people would say cursive writing, which is why it's not taught a lot anymore. Although I'm good at cursive writing because I had it. But what's really the point? I don't know. Maybe so you can read it. I mean, I can read it, but I hate it whenever I get a document and it's in cursive. Yeah. I hate it. I write in all caps because it's so legible. Well, and people say, oh, it's like faster to write in cursive, but I think it's just faster to print, honestly. It, it depends. Like cursive, you can get really loosey goosey with it. I know, it but then people really can't fast. read it. So to yeah. make it legible, you got to like write it properly. Yeah, and that, I feel like that will take a lot of time. Yeah. Just 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 print it. Just 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 print. What were your most awful experiences with ballet? So I know you didn't do ballet. I was going to say <laughs> I didn't do any, but if I just did, me. I guess I had a terrible experience cuz my brain blocked it off. So I've already talked about um like bullying experiences, but we did that with Mandy a few podcasts ago, so I won't get into that again. But the girls there were pretty awful and the thing is like well with dance in general it's all about competition and who is doing the most different kinds of dances like most girls would do jazz class tap class uh lyrical uh ballet hip-hop like it was about how many are you doing a week and but these what about girls, interpretive dance they probably had that too <laughs> these girls were literally they lived at the studio like they would go to school and their parents would drop them off and they would be there all day. And those girls got to like travel around for competitions and whatever. So anyone who's just doing ballet as a hobby, like I was, I didn't want to go to competitions. I would do one dance recital end of the year. We didn't pay a lot of money for it. You know, when you're doing competitions, you're paying for costumes. And if you have like eight different dance classes, it's eight costumes, and it's thousands of dollars. So when but you're the paying- the same can be said with any other sport, right? Yeah. There's a lot of investment, especially if you want to get into higher levels of these kinds of things. And I can relate in the sense of once you get into the extremely high like tier, to, per se, the extremely competitive stuff, it's no longer fun. Yeah. Like, it's at the point where it's, like, everyone's just mean to each other. It's so mean. And, like, the girls who did all those things and paid the studio $20,000 a year, they were the ones getting the special treatment. Everyone liked them. They were always the one in the front when we're doing our dance routines on, at our recitals end of year. Like, I was always at the back, like, hidden. Like, everything was favored to those people paying more and doing more and anyone who's been in dance you know exactly what i mean it was maybe me and one other person who was just doing it as a hobby and the dance teacher was mean to us people ignored us we were bullied uh it was just it was just a lot and like girls would literally like say like you know they would talk about how much better it was to be in competitions and i don't know it was just it was a lot it was yeah. a lot yeah, I can I can understand that. Yeah, especially dealing with people who like to hold it over your head. Yeah. Like, come on, everybody has different interests. Just I remember like chill. my teacher had this thick South African accent. Everything about her was so, uh, what is it, posh? Like, she was so fancy. Like, the, even the way she like walked was like a ballerina and she had this thick accent and she would just like tell us what to do. And I remember being so intimidated by her so intimidated by her i don't know it was scary i did it for 14 years 
And then I just couldn't do it anymore. You could say I tried. 14 years is definitely it trying. Is, you definitely gave it the, uh, I gave the it old a go. college try. I gave so, it a go. Yeah, you so. definitely did. And by the way, if you're like in competition and stuff, like I'm not saying that you're a bad person or it, you're a it bully. definitely takes somebody with, let's say, thicker skin to be able to handle that kind of environment. And you can be a kind person. From at least my personal experience because you probably experience it in those situations. Niceties and kindnesses seem to get thrown out of the window in those situations. And yeah. it's unfortunate. It is. How does all of Jesse's medical attention affect your relationship? I thought that was a good one because... We have to go to the hospital a lot <laughs> Yeah. in the middle of the night. So, I mean, it affects my sleep. It affects the sleep. I mean, I, I'm just going to just... We're just going to get all of your health stuff out of the way earlier on in the relationship. So, later on... You'll be a sick old man. <laughs> start happening, I can hold it above you and say, I took you to the hospital so many times. Now, take care of me. Yeah, now it's my turn. And now it's my turn to be sick. It would be silly to say that it doesn't affect our relationship. It's not like we fight about it. But it's I think it's not her fault. It's a little exhausting. You're not willingly saying, hey, Tuesday night, I'm going to be real sick. Yeah. I mean, I it's not like you're putting it in your calendar to be sick to do this. It's not your fault. You're not doing it on purpose. So yeah. how can I blame her? I don't think our marriage is affected. I think that like when I'm sick, Ty is negatively impacted like his mental health goes down right yeah, because I'm terrified i'm sick and then he's sad and he's you know upset that i'm sick not at me but just at the you know you can fact. be upset at a situation and not at the person causing it i don't like being in a hospital at like three o'clock in the morning yeah. i don't think anybody does jesse and i have gone through stories about this on our blog channel and she's also gone through stories about this on the podcast with mandy it's not a fun time i'm not giddy when we're in those situations. I just want her to be okay. I'm panicking. And yes, it does affect us in that sense, but I don't resent her for it. Yeah, Ty has never once complained. Never once when I've been like, we're gonna have to go to the hospital, has he been like, oh my gosh, are you serious? He's been like, okay, let's go. Yeah. He never complains ever. Because so. like, it doesn't do anybody any good. Jesse's already feeling like crap in these situations. Piling stuff on top of her, isn't going to help the situation. We need yeah. to get her feeling better. So we just got to do what you got to do. We get through it. I mean, we set our vows through sickness and health. We'll and I together. did promise that I would be the set of arms for you to get all the things at the top shelf. You did. I and did. you do. I do. And you do. But I also just put everything on the top shelf, though, so I feel needed. <laughs> okay. This one is directed at me. And this is actually a question that I've been getting for like seven years. When are you planning on telling your story about the thing that happened to you in high school? I should have never. Ooh, I'm not sure if the mic caught that. Was that your stomach growling? Oh, you heard that? I thought it was like a door rumbling or oh, something. No. Oh, no. Your stomach. Oh, I, I, I didn't have a big enough breakfast. Or that's just how you felt about and this And I know question. that's a terrifying prospect with how big I am. <laughs> how big must be the breakfasts that this guy consumes? I can't believe people still remember. It was like back in like 2015. I was like, I will tell you guys any story time from my life. And I did. I posted like 400 story times. You went into a lot of depth with a lot of things. Oh, yeah. And I said the only story time that I'm hesitant to post and probably never will was about an experience that I had happened to me in high school. And I still to this day have not posted it online anywhere. No one knows except my close friends and my family. I don't blame you for not wanting to share um, that one. It's a lot. And I don't know. I still don't know if I'll ever tell it. If I do, it's going to have to be like names redacted, school redacted, like literally it would have to be so carefully it was spoken about that i don't plainly, know it was a very serious and terrifying situation anyone would be uncomfortable sharing that kind of information i don't even know if legally because police were involved i don't know what i'm allowed to talk about so if i did it it would have to be in a form that i felt comfortable in and that seemed I don't want it to seem like I'm just putting it out there for views or something. I mean, I went to therapy for this stuff. You know, it's serious. And Jesse is an open book when it comes to that stuff. And that's probably why you brought it up that long time ago, that you want to be open with everybody and they know something happens. But yeah, like it's a tough... there are some things that just probably is best you don't talk about. Yeah. So and I mean, if I had posted this, it would have been my craziest story ever and just showing you that i didn't it shows that i it's 
it's affected me. <laughs> it has. You know, like it's not just something I can toss out there yeah. um, for views, like I said. It's so much deeper than that. Yeah. So the answer is I don't know. And I cannot believe people still remember. <laughs> okay. If music is therapy, who is your therapist? Honestly, for me, I find like I listen to most of my music on YouTube at this point. Like I remember when iTunes was like the shit. Yeah. But now iTunes has become like so ridiculously convoluted and it's like subscription this, subscription that. No, I just do Spotify it's now. It's too much. I had like a jailbreak iPod for years. And like that's how I listen to like all the really edgy stuff because I got it from my brother's friends. That's how I know a lot of the bands that you ended up listening to throughout high school was because of uh, because of them. Like I honestly listen to like cinematic game soundtracks most of the time. Yeah. So That's cool. I don't necessarily know the artists, for example, because it's a wide range of different composers. A fun one that I always end up listening to, which you'll have no idea what this song is. Okay. I was telling you about this game because it's like it's a huge achievement. It's called Dwarf Fortress. Okay. And it's been made by these developers for like decades. And they're basically trying to simulate human life, basically, with these little tiny dwarves. And there's a song that they made when they re-released it with like graphics and all this stuff called Drink and Industry. And that thing is a jam. Okay. It's only like two minutes long. If you can get in the mind space, especially, I know you could because you like your fantasy books. I do, yeah. If you imagine like a dwarven tavern, that's exactly what it is. And like the lyrics, even though it sounds like gibberish, they've created their own language for this game. Wow. And it's written in that. They went all out. They went all out with this thing. And I mean, it is jovial and exciting and it's probably a soundtrack that you could have like a bar fight to mm. all at once that always comes up on on my little playlist wow. my youtube mix everyone already knows mine bon Iver. <laughs> i feel like it's such a boring answer because people have heard it so many times but like that's just the truth i love but bon does Iver. it help you feel better or does it yes. just make you feel sad no it is my <laughs> comfort band i love any bon Iver song because I feel like a lot of the songs, especially the earlier stuff that he did. <laughs> there are sad. That is stuff that you cry to. But, like, I'm a sad person. <laughs> so I feel like... That makes me feel like I'm doing a terrible no, job no. as a husband. <laughs> Since I was a kid, I'm just a very, like, solemn... I don't know. Like, I'm always just... This... Your family and I like to joke that she's going off to listen to her funeral music. I love it. I love sad music. It's comforting. I'm sure there's people that are like this where it's just a comforting feeling. It doesn't make me sad or sadder. It's just comforting. Fair enough. I'll listen to it happy or sad and I'll be fine, you know? So if you hear like, I forget the name of the artist, but the song Mad World, if you hear that playing in one of our rooms, don't come in. I'm probably <laughs> bawling my eyes out. <laughs> That's a sad song. It is. How do you love yourself and not let hate get to you? Listen, I am not invincible. Hate gets to me. Sometimes I've become numb to it being on YouTube for 10 years. It really depends on what is being said. And there are some comments that you look at and honestly, it hurts. Yeah, I it think hurts. when it comes to like my appearance and my body, people who poke and prod at that, that's something I can't change, right? I can't change the way I look. So when people are making fun of that and they're serious, I think those get to me. I don't know. You got to just think that these are just people who are angry at home. They're behind a screen. You know, they know they're never going to say it to my face, you know. And yeah. so they and sometimes they might might not even mean what they say. They're just trying to get me angry in some way or they're. Some people do just like to instigate. And yeah. it's awful. Unfortunately, the Internet can bring out the best and the worst in people. But more often than not, it's the latter. My suggestion in this situation is to take time for yourself. And I know that sounds selfish, but sometimes you got to be selfish because if you want to take care of others in your life, you do have to take care of yourself. You need to remember that you yourself, anybody listening, you are valuable. Don't get let it go to your head thinking that you're above everybody else because everybody else in this world is valuable, too. And you need to take care of your mental state, your physical well-being, and to take time for yourself. If you're ever in a situation where people don't understand that, you just got to tell them. Make sure you are taking care of yourself. But also, like, surround yourself with people that mm -hmm. love you and care about you, your friends, your family. There are people who love you, and when you're around that love, you feel loved. Yes. Right? Even if there's hate going on in your life or people are being mean to you or whatever, surround yourself with people you love. And 
it's even better if you're honest with them about how you're feeling and if there's a bully or whatever or someone's harming you it's even better if you tell them Mm -hmm. because then they can help you or talk you through it or just and that's an important thing sit there with you be afraid to ask for help yeah in any situation it's actually brave don't be afraid to tell the people that care about you how you are feeling Mm -hmm. i know there's a lot of people that will hold back how they're feeling and all that stuff because they just want somebody to ask them guess what it's okay to tell them yeah. how you're feeling instead of just bottling it all up. What Disney princess slash prince do you think you're most like? I don't know. You know what I think I about? I honestly do not know. I am not an expert in Disney movies, so I don't want to say like the wrong princess or prince and have somebody say, well, that's actually a DreamWorks production. Well, let's not do um, looks. Let's do personality. I think you're like Flynn Rider. <laughs> Do you remember? What's that from? <gasps> from uh, Rapunzel. He's a goof. Is that Disney or is that DreamWorks? I think See, that's we Disney. Have to, we have to go by the question, I think it was Jess. Pixar, but now that's Disney. Pixar has like basically always been Disney. I think Flynn Rider's Disney. Okay. And like for me, and this is not because I'm like her, I want to be like Belle because she has a huge library. Have you seen the library in there? Wait, and you're Harry. So we're, we're kind of yeah, like... You said we weren't going on appearances here. <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my head around who these characters are because I do not know which Belle okay, are you talking if you, about. Beauty and the Beast. Oh, okay. You know, she has a massive library. See, I thought Tinkerbell and I was thinking, it's like, no. I don't think I ever saw Tinkerbell in a library before. No. I don't know who I'm like. Can you guys tell me? And who is Ty like personality wise, not looks wise? Don't go to the Harry comments because you're just going to choose Beast at that point. Am I like Beast, though? Because I feel like he was a jerk. No, you're not like the Beast. I don't know. I don't know either. I was saying Flynn. This question is not doing very well. It's We're not, not giving so you sorry. the answers you deserve. These are hard questions. How do you feel your content has changed over time? Well, well, we're doing podcasts now, so that's a good yes, thing. Yes, we can start with the obvious. Started as uh, story times, then it kind of went to uh, paranormal investigating, ghost hunting. You were sort doing of challenges for a while. Challenges, exploring. It was more of like me actually going and doing stuff, not just sitting in my studio. And then it turned into like documentary style, history, mysteries of the world, true crime, sort of more informational stuff, which is what I'm doing now. And you were doing vlogs on the side for a little bit, but then we revamped it, what was it, like five years ago? Six. And there was a lot of stories, like that basically turned into your story time outlet. Yeah, because it's like our real life, what's And then happening. it became challenges. And now we're it's doing... It's almost like the vlog channel is like a couple years behind the trend of what you were doing on your main yeah, channel. Yeah, kind of, yeah. And now we're doing podcasts. So, I mean, I think I try and go with the flow of what, you know, how content is changing as a whole and what people like and trying to, you know, evolve my content. It's an interesting balancing act. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to figure out what is the next thing before it happens. Like, it's it's challenging. But, yeah, it's what's frustrating, though, is the reason why I stopped doing story times is because I noticed a downward trend. I mean, every single year, my dad, who is part of my management team, we go through the year and look at how different topics of videos do. And, you know, for the first few years of YouTube, story times were just going up and up and up. People were so interested. And then I would say around 2018, it just went downhill. No one was watching the story times. And I tried for a year and I watched it go down, 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 down. Well, once I switched content, all my comments were, can we have a story time? Yeah. Why'd you stop story times? What do you? And I'm like, guys, you weren't watching it. Like people. YouTube is a fickle beast. Yeah. You honestly are at the whim of whatever your uh, analytics tell you. The algorithm is our God. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> like, <laughs> not our, actually. I love you, Jesus. Our um, unknowing being. Yes. That we don't know what will please it. It's in control of everything. It's a guessing game. And our content honestly evolves based on what are the numbers we're seeing. Yeah. And it sucks to not be able to do the things that are necessarily the most like, hey, this is going to be kind of fun. Let's just go for it. We have to treat it as a business because it is ultimately. And you want big number, not small number. 
Yeah, I mean, so. like, being for real, for real, and I've never said this outside of, like, my family circle, but, like, the content that I make is not always the content I love to make. Like, for example, I really like doing videos on, like, historical mysteries and crimes and stuff like that. Like, that really interests me, like, true crime and stuff, but I find those videos kind of tank. Like, they don't do very well, but the moment I post one about Barbie or Beanie Babies or some nostalgic item, like, those do well. So, yeah. like, I find that I'm almost forced to do those and like just being for real like sometimes i wish the content that i really enjoyed did well but you have to go with the algorithm and like anyone who says like well just do what you love or post when you want like whenever i'm sick they're like jesse take a month off but it's Can't like do that it's an ongoing train like when the train stops your algorithm tanks and it's hard to get it going again youtube unfortunately does not leave time for mental health breaks for whatever breaks because it will if you're sick guess what better still bad. be filming yeah, like it, it's it's so tough. And I've noticed now that my content, like I've been posting a lot of compilation videos because I've been sick and like I have to keep posting. And now people love the compilation videos, which is great. I honestly didn't expect that. But now when I try and post like regular my regular content. content, people don't watch it and they go, where are the compilation videos? I want to watch more. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys realize those are just regurgitated videos like they're all old videos that i'm just putting together which you know what if you guys like it like i love that we want right? to give you what you want but yeah it's, it can be challenging it's so frustrating and like obviously like we I... always joke a little bit that it's the videos that we do last minute haphazardly <laughs> haphazardly that are just kind of whipped together in like a whirlwind those tend to be the ones that do the best. Like I think on the vlog channel, our top video was just, we happened to have the camera in the car. And Jesse said, hey, you wanna go through Walmart and just try and find the scariest toy? And I looked at her and said, that sounds like an awful idea. Yeah. And it is the top video, the top performing video on the vlog channel. Yeah. It's hilarious. Listen, I don't wanna seem like I'm complaining. I. I know having a platform, I'm very blessed and every day I'm grateful. And still to this day, I cannot believe that I have so many amazing people that follow me and that are interested in what I post. It's like, it's that feeling where I love it and I'm grateful, but it's also mixed with, this is my career. How do I keep it going? And how do I stay with what's trending? And so yeah, it is overwhelming and it's a lot. And so I'm, it's like a mix of those two things that it's sometimes hard to figure out. <laughs> It's how I this really is kind feel of a little bit of a peek into the behind the scenes stuff. I guarantee you that other creators on the platform, they go through all of this as well. Yeah, because ultimately you have to treat it like any other career if you are using it as your work. So there does have to be that unfortunate calculating mentality behind it. Yeah, because you have to think, how is this going to best support everything that's going on right now because even as we're sitting here recording in the store that we run like we have employees that work for us and we need to make the best decision to be able to support all that still like it's not just a hey let's go out on a web let's have some fun with this we have to think what is the best for the business as a whole yeah i mean it's like branches of a tree right like it starts at me posting YouTube videos and that income every single month goes to all of the different employees that work to make Jesse V a thing, right? Yeah. Like we're a huge family behind the scenes. Jesse V is like a brand, right? It's a corporation. And so if I just say like, I'm not going to post this month or whatever, like there's, all those, they have jobs. <laughs> there's so many people behind me rely on it that I'm so grateful for, but that there's a pressure that I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I am at the top here and then everyone else has to be paid, right? So the choices that we make affects a lot of people. If I stop, everything stops. Yes. So like, that's why people all the time when they're like, YouTube's not a job, influencers don't have a job, it's so easy, it's so blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's true for people who are independent. It's only them posting, right? There's no one underneath them, whatever. But when you amass something like this, like it's amazing, but it's also like, it's daunting. we gotta keep the train going for these people, right? Running a company is terrifying. And it is a real job. It it's is. It's a real damn job, let me tell you, because it's a <laughs> lot of work. It is a lot of work. Anyway, I didn't expect us to go on this rant. There's always one in a podcast. I'm kind of scared because we I've never like really expressed this behind this the scenes. This is what the podcast is for. It. And also like, just to add to it, 
I'm going to be 30 in less than a month. My content, it's hard for me to always be doing like kids toys and stuff like that because maybe that I was interested in that stuff eight years ago. Actually, my channel's turning 10 this coming December. Yeah. Think about how much evolving you do in your 20s, right? I am not the same person that I was when I started YouTube. Sometimes I look at my old content and I'm like, I don't even remember filming that. I don't even know who that is. Like I'm always changing, mm -hmm. right? Like back then I was more hyper. I did more jokes and people might say I was funnier back then. I feel like as an older adult, like I've kind of calmed down a little bit. My interests have changed. I don't know. That's all I have to say about it, I guess. But I hope people understand that it's not an easy thing to figure out how to entertain people perfectly, right? And no matter what, it's never perfect. Yeah. No matter what. Anyway. Okay. Fun balancing act. This tangent brought to you <laughs> by the next question. <laughs> okay. How to maintain friendships as an adult. I don't think we're the experts on this, we're to be completely honest. Like, we are such independent people that like... We hide in our house most of the we time. We do. But because we're working. Yeah. We're running in between the errands that we do. We honestly do not have a lot of time for things. Even just... Let's use today as an example. We got up. We made our way here. We're filming. In between, I am... This is a social thing. It is a social thing. I'm going to be meeting my brother for lunch for a belated birthday. Yeah. And then immediately afterwards, I'm dropping Jesse off. To so look after Ophelia. Look after Ophelia for a bit. I'm meeting with my brother. Then I'm going back to help Jesse with Ophelia. And then immediately after. You're running a DD. and d I have to run a session. Well, actually, I'm not running the session this time, but I will be both participating in that. That's my friend interaction for the week yeah. while I'm cooking dinner at the same time. I'm going to have these very same headphones on talking to people making steak and potatoes tonight. Yeah. And like as an adult, there's a lot of stuff going on. But the benefit to that is that there's also a lot of stuff going on for everybody else so they can understand, or at least I hope they understand, that life just happens. Yeah. And you kind of get into like a routine and that seems to be my best advice for that is I section things off and if we are going to plan events, we plan them months in advance. But I also think that if your friends are true friends, they will understand you as a person, whatever that means. If that mm -hmm. means that you see them every three months, then that's how they understand your friendship works. Like I see most of my friends in person every few months, but we do try and stay in contact weekly. Well, listen, it takes an effort, right? You it can't does. just expect friendships to work without communicating and stuff. So keep in communication with your friends. That's so important, but it doesn't mean that you need to have a phone call every day doesn't mean you need to see them every day it's or even every month like elementary school where you hang out with everybody for multiple hours a day it is an unreasonable expectation to put that on other people and also to have that put on yourself yeah. life happens all you can do is just do your best it's all about understanding and like my best friend matt you guys know matt like we are what do we call each other low maintenance, low maintenance friends yeah. So a low maintenance friendship is where you both are at the understanding where you're not going to need to text every day. You're not going to need to call every day. And I'll see you once a month and we'll be fine. Like we'll catch up. Everything's cool. That's how Matt and I are. And that's just what I need as a friend because I know I'm not that friend who's going to call you all week and check in every two hours. And that's not me. But if that's you, then you find friends who are just like you. And that's yeah, how you that, maintain the friendship, right? It's all about communication and understanding. Yeah. That's really what it all boils and down to. And like-minded people who, yeah, will understand yes. what you need. All Next right. Next question. When was the last time you cried? Uh, last night. Two days ago. We're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> no, I want to say why. <laughs> I was crying because I was holding Ophelia because we've been going over there. And I was just at a point where she was sleeping in my arms and I was looking at this little cute being. And I'm like, I cannot believe that. She, she is... But she's Absolutely here. Absolutely adorable. I was joking with Mandy and Luca a little bit, saying that Ophelia is their one ring. Yeah. Because they were mentioning that even though they were handing her off to Jess, that that's all they could think about. Well, it's a separation. They can't My part precious. from her. I know. No, but yes. That's so understandable <laughs> it as parents. Is. Like you're protective. She and... is precious. Yeah, she is precious. Okay. And for me, it was actually on the car ride home from taking care of Ophelia. Just having a conversation with Jess. She's so mean to me. 
she's not. I was actually just having a very serious conversation about just stuff we've been dealing with. Yeah, just life stresses. Life stresses and honestly communicating about that stuff and letting those emotions out is important. Also, let men cry. We are all humans. It's just expressing emotion. If guys weren't allowed to cry, why do we have tear ducts? Exactly. I know. All right, this is another hard-hitting one that maybe we should have talked about before with the YouTube stuff. Do you ever plan on <laughs> quitting YouTube? Yes. Am I actively having a plan right now? No. no. But am I going to be on YouTube until I'm 90 years old? No. no. I mean, I think that's obvious. Social media changes, things are evolving, and I think people are already moving onto different platforms. The amount of YouTubers this year that have decided to stop posting or severely reduce the amounts of posts that they're doing it's honestly commendable, but uh, like we're in a situation where we're still enjoying what we do. Yeah. We're having fun with this. And I can assure you that a lot of the people who have been dropping off recently, it's because at that point in their life, they're like, you know what? I'm good. And yeah. they go and try new and exciting things. And it's extremely respectable. And like they're putting their own needs first, which is fair people are allowed to do that but i mean this is why we've started a podcast right we're trying to you know see different avenues and what that might bring i've I mean, mentioned as an editor for this podcast i'm having a lot of fun with this yeah and i know for most people hearing that statement probably feels like taking a cheese grater to your head how can you have fun editing something but i mean it's really weird seeing myself in this position but watching you and your sister having fun and all that stuff it's fun to see that yeah. it's a nice little thing to spice up the usual grind that we've been doing i've been enjoying it yeah it's been fun and here's a little inside scoop for you just talking about maybe things that are outside of youtube i have been writing a book for the past two years. She's been doing a really good job. Um, still working on it this year. You, you I did have a little bit of a panic attack though, Why? because you said that you wrote too much already. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, technically I've already written the book. So You've they say that two. <laughs> your book should be, especially for first you know, authors, it should be between 80,000 to 100,000 words. I'm currently at 110,000 words and I'm not even done the story yet. You're at like the halfway point. So, well, no, I have like a quarter <laughs> left. So I'm going to write it all and then I'll get an editor to help me cut it down. So it's going to be fine. But this year, my goal is to finish the book, hopefully in the next few months, and then have the editor finish it this year. So by the time next year starts, I can start putting it out to publishers and see what happens. I'm excited. Um, I can't tell you the title. I can't tell you what it's about because I kind of feel like can, that needs to be. Can we tell them what page number you're on? I don't know. 300 and. That's insane. 300 and something. I remember spending a month to make a five page essay. It's taking me it's two a lot of years. Work. I'm so excited about it. It's going to be either a new adult or an adult novel. I have to figure out with the editor what she thinks it kind of belongs in, but it's a mixture of all kinds of different genres. Mystery, romance, horror. It's... Where's the sci-fi and dragons though? There's no sci-fi Is that in the last quarter? <laughs> no, but I'm so excited. And obviously as soon as that kind of gets moving, I'll update you guys, but like, wouldn't it be cool to like have a career as an author as well? Like, and maybe that's what I do in my thirties. Like that's, I'm excited for new opportunities and we'll see what happens. Yeah. That's the inside scoop for that. Okay, uh, last one. What do you think the second Coraline movie will be about? They're now, making a second one? Here's the thing. They're not. Am TikTok, I in danger? No. <laughs> because we watch this movie constantly. I love Coraline. But you don't even watch the shows that I want to watch. Come on. I know, but Coraline's different. I've been trying to get her to watch Invincible because I binged that show in a night. And I got to say, I'm excited for season two. It might have already finished already season two. I don't know. But I think you'll enjoy it. Probably not. It's great. We're going off topic. Coraline 2. It's... I think we should just keep going off topic so I can avoid this. Okay, Coraline 2 is not happening. I just want to say that for anyone who got really excited because I always get excited when I see fake posters for Coraline 2. The makers of the first Coraline said there's just no other story they need to tell and that they're happy with it being just a one-time movie, which makes me sad because I want more. But... If they were going to do a Coraline 2, make it about the other mother's origins. You don't have to make it about the continuation of the story. Make it a prequel. That's the best idea. But I feel like we've done the prequel thing before. What do you mean? Star Wars, Jess. How did that go? I love all Star Wars movies, so I don't know what point you're trying to make. Everything about Star Wars is perfect. You can still be a fan. Nope. 
of a series nope. and understand some of the uh, slip ups. Flawless. It's far from Flawless. that. It's, it's pretty far from that, Jess. Anyways, Coraline I'm a huge too. fan of Star Wars, and I can recognize that. If anyone from Leica is watching, which they're not, but if anyone is watching, <laughs> <laughs> I'll invest into that movie. No, I won't. <laughs> they can have $5. <laughs> Actually, yeah, sure, I'll invest, and I we just won't talk about numbers right now. Literally, like we can do like a GoFundMe just so they'll do uh, go a Coraline too. GoFundMe so you can invest in it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just I um, want to invest in this movie that hasn't happened yet. Everybody else, let's pitch in so I can invest. I'm so passionate about it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, we're gonna end the podcast now. I am about to go see Ophelia. I'm so excited! Thank you guys for sending in all of the questions. Next week. I believe we're going to have a guest. If that doesn't work out, Ty will be back. We'll be back. And uh, I've already given Jesse a list of topics, and she's terrified, so she wants to get that guest in. Maybe. She does. Yes. Anyways, guys, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day, and we'll see you in our next podcast. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>